Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at using classes, CSS classes that is, to uh, style images. And uh, these images we're going to be, you know, kind of messing with them a little bit, putting some borders around them, you know, margin padding, things like that. And uh, maybe we'll even throw a little drop shadow underneath them with CSS. So, how do we do it? Well, First thing we need to do is, uh, well, we're going to do it to these two images here, and we need to wrap them both in divs uh, that call a certain class. So we can do it quickly and easily by simply hit, selecting the image and hitting Control T. And if you get this Edit tag, just hit Control T a second time, and you get the Wrap tag pop up. And we're just going to type div space class space equals open quote, close quote. And between the two quotes, we're just going to type IMG, this is the name of the class, IMG underscore class. Didn't get much simpler than that. And then we're just going to close the div with a closing div tag. Hit enter. And you can see we now have this div encapsulating this image of the seashore. We're going to do the same thing to this sunset image. Control T twice. Div space class space equals open and close parenthesis, and img underscore class. Now we have not defined this class yet. We're just setting up these two divs so that we can use class selectors to select these two divs and apply some CSS styles to them. All right, close that div off, hit enter, bam. Both of our images now have divs around them. So now it's time to create a new class style. I'm going to come up here to my CSS styles panel. That is in the CSS panel window. CSS styles. And I've got the all section selected. Not current, but all. And I'm just going to select the style head rule. I'm not, just ignore this layout.css. You probably don't have that there. Just ignore it for now. That's just the rest of the page's layout. So I'm going to go to style. This is just within this page. And I'm going to hit this new CSS rule button. In the new CSS rule dialog. I'm going to choose class. I'm going to select all this and get rid of it. And I'm going to type dot img underscore class. Now, as long as you you know selected a class, you don't have to put the period at the beginning of your little selector. I just I'm used to doing it. It's kind of a habit for me. So you know you can put it there, but if you don't, don't worry. Dreamweaver will add that period for you. So we're going to say dot img class and define in this document only. Hit OK, and we get the CSS rule definition for IMG class. Now basically, I know that these images are 120 pixels by 96 pixels tall, so I'm going to go first thing to box, and just choose width 120, height 96. Next thing I'm going to do is, uh, well, I'm going to hit OK actually, and we're going to watch to see what happens. We're going to hit OK, and you can see that the divs pull in and just wrap themselves tightly around the image. Now, we want to place a drop shadow beneath these images, so what we need to do is increase the margin of the right and bottom of these images to basically show an image that we're going to set as a background image. So double click on image class and let's go over to box and uh, well, let me just double check to make sure margin is going to do it for us. Add 15 to the right and 15 to the bottom, hit apply, and that of course did not do it. So we're going to set that back to zero. Well, actually, I just delete it. And uh, what I need is padding. Right, 15, bottom 15, apply, and that is exactly what we need. Actually, we want to increase this to 20 because we're going to have a five pixel border going around this. Make that 25 because if it's a five pixel border on one side, there's a five pixel border on the other, and five plus five equals 10. So 25, and we should be good to go. Hit OK. Now, for the drop shadow image, it's just going to you know come off this side. Maybe it won't be quite this big. Let's go over to Photoshop and create it real quick. If you have Photoshop, open Photoshop. Create a new document. Now, you should make this document as big as the biggest image you're going to use this drop shadow on. So I'm going to be maybe having an image 640 by 480. I'm actually just doing it so you can really see what I'm doing. Now, the mode is going to be RGB color, and background contents will be transparent. So I'll hit OK, and oh, I'm just going to right click back here and hit custom. Now I'm going to create a new layer, and 
I need to actually expand my canvas. Well, let me just close this document, create a new document. New document, and we have 640 by 480. We want about a, I was thinking a 15 pixel drop shadow, but those images are pretty small. So let's just do uh, like a, a 10 pixel, just so it's easier to see. So we're gonna increase the width to 650 by 490. And again, make sure you have RGB color and transparent as your background. Hit OK. Now, here what we need to do, grab the selection tool and set the style to fixed size, set the width to 640 pixels and the height to 480. And just drop a selection in the very top left hand corner, just like that. Create a new layer now and fill that with black. Alt, backspace, or option delete if you're on the Mac. Command or control D to deselect. Now reduce the fill opacity to zero. Okay, fill opacity is right beneath the actual opacity. Reduce that to zero, and uh, we're going to apply a blending option. So go layer, oops, layer, layer style, or uh, layer style, not a blending option, excuse me. Drop shadow. And we want this to be 135 degrees. It really doesn't matter if it's global light or not. And the distance, we want to be 5, and the size, we want to be 10. Just like that. Multiply as the blend mode is fine. Opacity can stay at 75. Maybe we'll reduce it to about 50 and that looks pretty good. You can hardly see it, but that's fine because if we put it over color, we're gonna be able to see it. Hit OK. And now we need to save this file out, but before we do this, if you recall, GIF images kinda of have trouble with these nice smooth edges. So we can fix that problem by setting a matte color, but we need to figure out what the matte color is going to be. And the matte color is gonna be whatever the color is behind that image that we are working with. So that is in this div here. So I'm going to dig into my CSS file, and I happen to know that content left holder is that div. Your background, color, and I can see that it is pound, eb, eb, eb. That's the color that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop, file, save for web and devices. Up oh, pops the rather large dialog box. And I'm going to check off transparency, but you can see that it, it's still fading it out to white. Let me just zoom in on that so you can see what's going on. You can see it's still it's fading from the gray to white, and that's going to look very bad. So we need to look over here at the matte. I'm going to double click that, and I'm going to set my matte color to EB, EB, EB. Hit OK. And you can see it's now fading to that color instead of white. So it's going to blend much nicer with our background. OK, now save and I need to find where I'm saving this I'm just gonna select the desktop and I'm just gonna save it as untitled.gif that's fine so we've just saved it out I'm just gonna close it now and I'm gonna go over to bridge where I have this shadow file already and it's actually a 15 pixel shadow so we are in fact gonna use the 15 pixel shadow in Dreamweaver I'm gonna drag it over into Dreamweaver actually whoops I just drag down to my taskbar that's why you saw that I'm gonna drag this right out of bridge and drop it in my images folder. Matter of fact, I'm gonna take bridge and just flip it over to compact mode and minimize it. So here we go, we've got imgshadow.gif. And that's the shadow we want. So we're gonna double click on our image class here. And uh, if it opens, there we go. We're gonna select the background category, go to the background image and browse, go over to the images folder and choose image shadow, hit okay. And we want to have no repeat we want the horizontal position to be to the right and the vertical position to be to the bottom. So we want it to be in the bottom right hand corner. So we're just going to hit apply and see what happens. Wow, look at that. We've got a, a nice looking shadow, but it's about 10 pixels from the edge of our image. Okay, why is that? Well, I'll show you. It's because, remember we increased the padding there so these images would have room for a border. So we still need to add that border. And we're going to do that in just a second, but I want to come back into this image class and just add some margin to uh, each side of this. Maybe 15 pixels of margin, hit apply, see what that looks like, pretty good. Kind of moves in and off the edge a little bit. Now, we're going to create an entirely new class that just targets images to automatically basically target these images and apply a border to them. So how do we do that? Well, create a new CSS rule and you can just have advanced selected and for the selector you're just going to type A because we're targeting the anchor tags, that A tag that angle bracket A, angle bracket that's an anchor tag, so we're tar targeting the anchor tags which is going to target all the images in our document so, and it's going to apply whatever style we decide to 
those anchor tags. So I'll come over to border. We're going to choose solid as the style. The width will be five. And the color, well, let's just make it white. Let's hit OK. And uh, we can see that we're having some pretty serious issues as far as up here getting selected and everything jumbled out of place. And that is because an anchor tag is not an image tag. I got kind of confused. And you can see it has targeted all of our anchor, which are our link tags, and put a 5-pixel border around them. We don't want that. We need to right-click on this and hit Edit Selector and change that to IMG. How much simpler can you get? How did I forget that? IMG is the image tag. Now, as soon as I deselect this, watch what happens. Look at that. Links go back to normal. Images get a nice border, and all of a sudden the images line up with the drop shadow. Let's just save this and take it out onto the web, uh, Firefox and Internet Explorer, and make sure that we work. So I'm going to hit F12, and here we are out in Firefox. Gonna make my window a little smaller so you can see what's going on. Here we go, and you can see that our images look pretty darn good. Now, we do have a little bit of a problem, that is that this little icon here is also an image, and it has a little white border around it. So, there are a couple ways we can go about getting around that. First of them is simply create a new style, a new class, and we'll call this IMG Regular. So, just REG, just Regular. Hit OK, and basically we're going to come over to Border, and we're going to set this to None, and the width to Zero. Hit OK. And we're going to select this little image, and we're going to, here in the properties under classes, we're going to select image reg. And there we go, back to normal with that image, but these images stay the same. There's actually a better way to do it though, because I mean, if we only want these two images with drop shadows and borders, why bother target every image on the page? Why not use CSS to target only a section of our page? Only this portion of the page that has these images in it. Okay, more specifically, we want CSS, if I can select it here, we want CSS to target this div, the content left holder div, and look for images inside of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this image reg uh, class, delete that, and you can see this image is or now re-surrounded by the white border. So here on the image style, okay, just the IMG, we're going to right click and hit edit selector, that's just changing the name, we're going to move to the front, and we're going to say pound content underscore left underscore holder space image. And that's basically just saying target. I want you to select that content left holder div. That's with the pound. And then after that, look for the image tag. Watch what happens. When I deselect it, the same exact thing happens. That icon no longer has the white border, but the images inside of there do. So that's really great. And I can actually just drag maybe image one up. Double clicked it and it's opening it in Photoshop. I want to close that. I want to drag image one out and just drop it here. Hit OK. And you can see that, yeah, sure, it doesn't quite fit in right because it doesn't have the div wrapping it, but we can fix that. You see, it automatically has that border on it because it's an image within that div. I'm just going to hit Control T twice here. We're going to drop that div with the class equals. And it was IMG underscore class. Close it off. And hit Enter. And all of a sudden, we, well, something happened there. We have our images, oh, I see what happened. Our images are all, you know, at, getting given this drop shadow. And our, Im well, the, the divs containing our images, I need to go into code view. <laughs> the divs containing our images, this div here is causing a problem. Uh, back to what I was saying. How many times did I repeat myself? Three times, four times? The div containing our images has that shadow. Now we have another problem over here with this div. Yeah, what's going on? An extra closing div tag here, maybe? Possibly. Oh boy. I just messed it up big time. Well, that is how you <laughs> that is how you use classes with images. I'm just going to undo here a few times. That's how you use classes with images and CSS and try not to get yourself mixed up. I probably would have been able to figure it out but with the code this big. It's hard to see yourself around. So that's how you do it. You just create divs. You can use container divs to add that drop shadow like we added to those images. Or you can just, you know, leave the image outside of the container div 
and just you know apply a border you can you know set margin set padding you know push things away from each other all kinds of really cool things you can do with classes and images and obviously you can come into here and anytime you want you can just change the class if you have multiple classes so if we had image class one well, we just selected the div and did that so we don't want to do that we're going to choose none for the actual div we just want the image but um, you know you can really play around with this different images can have different classes different divs can have different classes and really the results are endless and you know the way you can use your selectors to you know only select different divs is very very useful especially when you're designing a site uh, where you have many different areas of the site so that's how you do it I hope that you have learned a little bit about CSS and classes and CSS classes and image images and uh, uh, you can check out the other CSS video that I have. It is about CSS classes and links, how to create CSS rollovers right here in Dreamweaver. It's very, very easy. I urge you to check that out as well. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you uh, learned something. And hope you had a little bit easier time as far as managing your layout there. No hairy experiences. And uh, that's it for this one. Please go check out the site. It's www.tutvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.